If buying or leasing a turnkey dairy at another location is part of your business strategy, this episode is for you. More and more dairies are looking at multiple sites as the way to go and the way to grow. But taking on another dairy can also mean taking on a new team of employees. And the producers I know, they want to get up to speed quickly, not only with efficiencies, but also with the levels of performance that they're used to. So the real question is this, how do you walk into an existing dairy and its culture and recreate it to be what you need it to be so that this new site and the new team are as engaged and motivated as you are to hit your benchmarks and goals? Well, that's what we're diving into today on this Up Level Dairy Podcast, the podcast for dairy farm owners, managers, and advisors who are committed to success, profitability, and sustainability. My name is Peggy Coffeen, and it's my mission to bring you the conversations that will uplevel your skill set and your mindset so you can be a top performer in the dairy business. So whether you're managing multiple sites right now or looking hard at an opportunity to take on another dairy, you'll want to hear from today's guest, Bridget Schilling from Schilling Farms in Darlington, Wisconsin. Schilling Farms is one that is long associated with excellence. And in fact, back in my magazine editor days, I used to watch their team be recognized annually as one of the top repro herds in the nation at the Dairy Cattle Reproduction Council annual meeting. They had about 600 cows, a top-notch team. Well, two years ago, the opportunity came up for them to purchase a second site with 1,500 cows, and it was 40 miles away in the town of Montfront. That also meant taking on a dozen more employees who stayed with the dairy through the buyout. And it was during this time of transition that Bridget stepped back from her 12-year nursing career to join her husband, Brian, his brother, Andy, and Andy's wife, Sarah, on the dairies. Bridget borrowed a few key tactics from her professional management experience that have made all the difference with getting the Monfront crew transitioned so that Schilling Farms can operate at the level of excellence that they are known for. This episode is sponsored by Adiseo, global leader in animal nutrition and premier provider of rumen-protected methionine for dairy producers who want to capture the value of components and maintain the health of their high-performing herds. Now, the home farm in Darlington of Schilling Farms was milking about 600 cows, and this transaction in December of 2021 made room for an additional 1,500 cows at a site 40 miles away near the town of Monfront. And while the partners in the dairy were figuring out new systems, moving cows, commuting back and forth, Bridget could see their hustle to get the cows and operations dialed in, yet she couldn't help but ask one really important question. Who is supporting the employees through this time of change? So everybody was just trying to get like the logistics figured out about, okay, we got to get the the cows up here to get them milked. And then what are we going to do with the dry cows? And what are we going to, you know, we have to make sure they freshen. They were putting in, um, adding stalls in the parlor. So it's a double 27 up there. So they added stalls, cleaning things up after the sale, getting cattle to the dairy. We didn't keep the cattle that came with the dairy or we kept very few, I should say. So getting all of the trailers there and having people help us, there was just a lot of um, like the logistical stuff of this. So then I felt like, well, how are we supporting these employees? Because it's scary for them. What's it going to be like with a new boss? How are they going to treat us? What's going to change? Am I going to work the same hours as my financial status? You know, what I'm making, is that going to change? Changing a culture that was already there was another thing that's been, you know, we did things different. Not bad, good, or indifferent. We had to implement changes and things that we had found to be successful for our team in Darlington. As a former nursing floor supervisor, Bridget knew the longstanding team back at Darlington also needed reassurance of the security and stability of their roles through the acquisition of the new site, as well as additional support. And that eventually became her role. Most of the employees we've had, we've had for a long time here, but they too were like, what's going to change for us? So letting them know, you know, nothing's going to, this is what's going to change for you here. And, and we did have those conversations when I said we went to 24 hour maternity coverage that had transitioned because one of the guys had said, I'm having trouble doing barn chores and trying to manage the maternity pens when all of this was changing. And Brian was like, oh, okay. Yep. What can we do? So yes, just trying to manage that and listen to the employees too of what's changing for them. Bridget cut back on her time on the nursing floor to step into this new HR role at the dairy in April of 2022. That was a few months into the new site transition. Now she herself had experienced changes in leadership and management and she recognized that 
her as another new person would be another new change for the Montfront crew. That's why she insisted on clear communications within the ownership team first before ever setting foot in the barn with employees. I think, you know, just letting everybody know along the way how things were going to change. Um, and then having a lot of communication between uh, especially the four of us, meaning my husband, his brother Andy, and his wife Sarah, and trying to talk about how this was going to affect everybody. And making sure everybody's on the same page. Getting on the same page as a leadership and ownership team was step number one, the precursor to the next step of then introducing Bridget to the new team. That I can't go into this meeting and not have you guys have support from me because I don't, they don't know me. And I would feel that way too. If somebody just walked in, I'd be like, where did you come from? So I would bring either Brian or Andy or Sarah and we would have group meetings with them and try to define my role as you will eventually, it will be Bridget doing some of these things. So I think that was, it, it was, it was give and take on both parts. We had to trust them and they had to trust us. And that right there, the key word, trust. That becomes the foundation for the buy-in that leads to a cohesive, high-performing team. And building it became Bridget's mission. You can't just walk in and start bossing somebody around and saying, this is how we're going to do it. I needed to listen and hear. So just those po policies and procedures, how do employees know that they're doing it this way? Writing some of those things down and having that black and white concrete piece of paper that somebody can look at and say, this is exactly how you milk a cow. And I think that was another thing I brought from the nursing field was I should be able to emulate a, a procedure by reading what's done and, and having somebody show me and um, making it very clear and simple. So trying to implement some of that stuff, especially with that milking procedure. Very early on, it was just open communication of, like I said, what's going well and what's not. What do you need to be able to do your job? Um, like one of the employees had said to me early on, we need it. Here's what we're missing in the toolbox. Can you get these things for me? I was like, yep, wrote a list down, brought the things. And then I think consistency for them as well as following through with what you're gonna say, with what you say you're going to do. So that's following through with what you say you're gonna do is probably the biggest thing um, because that's one way that they're gonna develop trust with you. So let's recap these steps that Bridget talks about. First, number one, clear communication with the leadership team. Number two, building trust, but how? She did it through writing down clear policies and procedures, then working alongside employees to watch and learn with them, and using that as an opportunity to ask people what they need to be able to do their job. And the most important step in doing that and solidifying that trust, following up and following through. Just like the night shift on the nursing floor, Bridget knew that connecting with every employee during every shift matters when it comes to building that critical foundation of trust with the new team even if it meant paying a visit to the parlor at 11 p.m. So spending time and being intentional of saying, yes, I'm going to be here, knowing what you do at night. What's different about day shift and night shift? And like I said, spending time in the parlor and knowing what they're doing. Oh, they're just milking cows. Well, it's different on every shift. You have different personalities. You work differently together. I want them to know that I'm a part of the team just as much as them. We have different roles. It doesn't make anybody less or more important. And if you need me to do something, I will do that. I will say that is probably something I learned from my husband. He will not ask the employees to do something that he's not willing to do too. I have seen my husband and actually my brother-in-law do some very gross things when it comes to manure. You know, and even when the when the cows first came to the dairy and mop first, cows are creatures of habit and getting them in that parlor and having to get those stubborn ones pushed through and them helping the employees along with that is huge. So I think working alongside somebody is different than working above somebody. When it comes to building foundational trust with a new team, actions speak volumes but so does the tone of communication. You have to have an element of trust and respect and tact when you're speaking with people as well. So I think that's the other thing that's, that's big for me. I'm never gonna yell at an employee or be unprofessional. 
I don't want to create this culture where people are scared. That's not the culture that I want. And if that's what, what they want, I'm not, I'm not the person for the role. And that's okay. It's very simple, you know, to just communicate with people respectfully and have that open line. It's, it's not perfect by any means. I never want to pretend like it's perfect because there's definitely tough conversations and things that are constantly evolving and, and but you just have to work through those things. And I think the other thing is, is listening to your employees. This is not working well. Well, let's talk about how we're going to change it. We know there's a problem. Let's talk about that. As Bridget stresses the importance of constant intentional communication with the new team, you may be wondering, was there a language barrier involved? Well, the answer is yes, but she found an invaluable asset that helped to bridge that gap. They know that I speak very little Spanish. It's something that I try to work on and it's, it's tough. It's tough to learn a language at almost 40 years old. But I have been fortunate enough that I brought on somebody who interprets for me. Her name is Brittany and has cow knowledge and a dairy knowledge and been super blessed to have her interpret for me. And she also works at the school um, in the area. So she sees some of these families um, and knows them on a personal level as well. And they have um, established trust with her as well. So that's been, she's been a great addition to helping our team. And I, I could not do it without her. So, and not just for the, yeah. not just for the, Spanish speaking portion, not afraid to get dirty, work right alongside them. She teaches me stuff all the time. I can do anything with gloves. So the one thing about nursing and farming is there's a lot less gloves, but I wear gloves for everything. So just just listening and hearing her and having her show me things and teach me things along the way has been great. Bridget has also brought structure and consistency to the communications with the Montfort team. And what she's about to tell you right here has been one of the highest impact actions. It's one-on-one -on -one meetings with each employee three times a year. I do it every four months. And just to sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, we talk about, you know, I, I usually ask them what they're grateful for um, or what do they value. We talk about what's one thing you can improve in your job role. What do you... What do you like about working at the dairy? I just try to find like four or five questions that we can just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I always close with, what can I do differently as a leader? What support can I give you? So I enjoy doing those and having that one-on-one. -on -one. I don't do it monthly. I think for right now, that could transition. Maybe I will end up doing it monthly right now. It seems every four months, this is what's working right now. The very first time we did this, each person, we had them show us on the map exactly where they lived and what part of the country. And several of our employees have come from the same part of Mexico. So just learning about their where they were, um, looking at pictures of that area. And there's one Veracruz, um, just looking at the pictures of the churches and the beauty that's there. And I think that was one really interesting thing and having, listening to them talk about what life was like at home and then their families, listening to them talk about their families or their kids. I pick one day, I put it through the WhatsApp and I will put a sign on the window right by the time clock and say, this is what's coming up. And then I have a sheet they sign up on and they will pick out their time that they want to come and I'm here from this time to this time and then they can schedule on their own I do about 15 minute interval um the first one I scheduled a little bit longer and we found that we didn't need that much time so then I went to 15 minute intervals I will say sometimes we stick to 15 minutes and sometimes we don't so that's another a little bit I don't want to ever cut them short if there's things they want to talk about because as we know with anything People don't just come to work and just have work to deal with. They might have other things going on in their life. And I want them to know I will support them or I have resources. I've been fortunate enough in our area that there is like a, a Southwest CAP program or group that has been of support and have resources for, for the employees to have access to. Healthcare, you know, mental health resources, you know, if they need help with like rental assistance. They have a, a medical bus on wheels that will come to the farm 
we've had them come and they can get physicals, they can get immunizations, they can get, oh my gosh, they have so many resources for them. If they needed like an x-ray, if they needed, because a lot of them don't, you know, don't have services. So um, just being able to give them some of those, those basic need things to help them. And then we have a community clinic in the area that they can go to as well, a free clinic that they can go to as well. So From working alongside employees on the night shift to opening up conversations and following through to regularly scheduled one-on-one -on -one employee meetings, Bridget has been able to see shifts in the level of trust with the new team, and that's helped get the Montfront Dairy running effectively and efficiently. So I think the biggest thing for me is how I would gauge that they will come to us and say something or say something to me. And that's where I think more of that trust has been established or that trust is established. I think it's one of those things that's, that is a constant, um, constantly evolving. And as you're saying that, and I'm thinking about it, I will, I remember one of the gentlemen that works, works with our team and he was always relied upon by the previous owner. And we relied upon him at, a, a lot as well, especially when we first started. And I know all four of us would say without the employees knowing the ins and outs of that dairy, it would not have been the transition it was. So we were super thankful for the support and, the, and, and you know, as much as they stayed with us, we were thankful they wanted to stay with us. So with that as well, I remember him saying to me, we do things very differently. And he's, he recognizes some of the things that have, that he felt were positive changes. And he told, he told me that. And that's one of the things I look for from employees is what can I do differently? And what can I do differently as your leader? That is usually my closing question with them um, or what support can I give you? And another thing I feel has helped is when I ask those questions, they give me honest feedback. And when they say to me, we want you to be in here more on night shift. You're right. I'm not there enough on night shift. So yes, I will make it a point to be there. And I think the other thing is, is listening to your employees. This is not working well. Well, let's talk about how we're going to change it. We know there's a problem. Let's talk about that. But I just feel like constantly, I feel like constantly talking to them. And uh, that's the other thing. And I did this as a nurse. I don't stand and preach. I sit down at a table and we talk together. I don't stand in front of them. That's not my style. I feel when when you stand, you're lecturing or you're preaching, and that's not ever my intention. And I, f there are certain settings that's, that that's very appropriate. When I practice as a nurse or I'm one on one with an employee, or even during these these meetings, I sit at the table with them. I am never. I always feel, like I said, nursing's a team sport. So is so is so many professions. I can't do my job without somebody doing the book work. I can't do my job without somebody milking cows. I can't do it without somebody checking who's pregnant, somebody feeding the babies. We all have to work together. We all have a role that is intertwined to be successful. When I stand and preach, I feel as though I'm above them. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. That's just the way that I feel. I don't want to preach at somebody. I want them to know that I'm a part of the team just as much as them. You've been listening to Bridget Schillings from Schilling Farms based in Darlington and Montfront, Wisconsin, and learned how she has stepped into an HR role as they took on a second site and more than doubled their employee team. Here are the cliff notes for how she has helped get the Montfront team 40 miles away from the home farm, bought in on a culture of excellence and high performance. Step number one, she and the ownership team got on the same page and opened up their own communications before she ever set foot in the barn. Next, she built a foundation of trust by bringing in a translator that could be shoulder to shoulder with her as she worked alongside employees in the parlor and in the barn, asking them questions, following through, offering support. And number three, she's brought structure to ongoing communications with the scheduled one-on-one -on -one meetings every four months, where she sits down, looks people in the eye, and asks key questions like, how can I support you? What do you need to be able to do your job easily? And what can I do differently as a leader? And then she listens and follows through. 
and these steps have accelerated the new team to the high standard Schilling Farms is known for. If you found value in what Bridget has shared today, be sure to not only leave a review, but keep listening to more of the Up Level Dairy podcast because I'm going to drop some more golden nuggets in an upcoming episode on how Bridget is empowering middle managers, her employee cell phone protocols, and bringing team building to the dairy. This episode is sponsored by Up Level Dairy founding partner, Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and premier provider of rumen protected methionine for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from components, and maintain the health of their high-performing herds. And feed is the greatest expense on any dairy operation. And don't you want to know how an adjustment to the ration will affect your bottom line? Adiseo empowers nutritionists to make informed ration balancing decisions with MilkPay.com. Customizable to your dairy's own data, this profitability calculator puts the power of real-time milk market information in the palm of your hand. Find out how much your latest ration change is really costing you with the free MilkPay app available on iOS and through MilkPay.com. And thank you, friends, for listening to the Up Level Dairy Podcast.